Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is Bill Acevedo with Dell OMM Tech Talk. Today, we are presenting uh, basic Windows installation. The session will be recorded and distributed. It should be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes in length. And uh, we will follow up with a Q&A session. If you do have questions along the way, feel free to enter them into the chat window. Uh, everyone is muted during the duration of the video portion. Um, so let's get started. Typical installation begins with uh, downloading the file from uh, the OMNM site, and that typically is a zip file. And the first step is to unzip that file and extract all of the uh, contents. Uh, if you try to execute from within the zip file, it will fail. And so I have here an uh, extracted installation. Here's the uh, common directory structure. Um, you just go into the install directory to initiate the install and click winninstall.exe. Before we get started, we are going to talk a little bit about prerequisites. Uh, one of the main prerequisites is that the install user must be a member of the administrator group. Now, Windows comes with a default administrator user who is part of that group, and um, you do not want to use that user. That user will be rejected during the install. So what you want to do is create a user in Windows and then add them to the administrator group. Once you do that, you will be able to uh, proceed with the uh, installation. You simply click on the Windows install.exe file. Okay, and uh, the installer first presents you with an uh, informational screen on what you're doing here and what you're installing. This happens to be a 6.1 Service Pack 1 uh, installation. So I'm going to just click Next here. And we are um, um, shown the minimum um, system requirements. So at this point, we'll take a minute to look at what are the minimum system requirements and, and how that might affect your installation. And uh, you should review this state information that I'm going to show you before you install so you know that you're installing a system that is capable of accepting the install and performing uh, with a reasonable level of performance. Um, the basic requirement is dual core, 2.8 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM. It has to be 64-bit operating system, a minimum of 100 gigabytes of disk space, and uh, you should have 7,200 RPM disks. Now, if you click on this link here, it's going to take you to a Dell site that is going to have a whole bunch of documentation, including the user guide. I'm going to show you the user guide that I already have here to show you where you need to look for sizing. And so this is, again, this is just the user guide. And the you know, user guide, and I'm going to go to the table of contents here. And you see here this section here under getting started with Dell Open Management Network Manager, System Basics, Expects Practices. There's a section here called Sizing for Standalone Installations. And this is meant to be a basic guideline for sizing your system. And so there's a lot of caveats around sizing. This is, these are just very general. You can modify your sizing plus or minus, you know, in terms of RAM or uh, disk space, depending on how you're using the system. But you should really should review this section in, uh, com in, uh, in its completeness. And there's, again, there's lots of caveats here and footnotes on things on how we size things. Um, but generally, we have these allocated um, by the SKU levels that we distribute, starting with the 25 level. And again, what you saw here was the minimum of 8 gigs of RAM, 64-bit operating system. This will support five concurrent users, uh, maximum of 2,500 targets, and then some, uh, five, it comes with five flow exporters. And uh, this is, these are the defaults that we're going to see here, 3 gigabytes, gigabytes of RAM on the application server. And then uh, 512, you're not going to be able to modify this, but that's the default setting in the application. And then you will have an option during the installation to uh, modify the Synergy web server. Now, um, the web server RAM is directly impacted by the user. So, for example, you had more users, you may want to have more RAM here instead of two gigs. Um, and then you might want to adjust the application server default settings if you intend to use the application in some other way other than specified in this section of the documentation. But you can see here as we go up in the maximum number of users that we are increasing system requirements. 
and I think actually this, this one maxes out at 2,000. We actually go up to 10,000 um, on the newer documentation. Um, so what you see here is with 2,000 managed devices, you're going to want to have a 32 gig of, gigabits of bytes of RAM. Um, you probably going to want to have multi-disc um, server level, level PC. You know, workstation or desktop level may not be adequate. Um, you're recommending fast disks or SSD drives. And so there's other, uh, you know, we support 100 concurrent users here and uh, up to 200,000 targets and 100 exporters. And uh, this is typically what you want to set on your application server aside, outside the default settings. When you go to install, you're going to want to change these to say, I want 10 to 14 gigs of RAM on the app server and I want 8 gigabytes on the web server. And then you're going to want to manually look for the documentation to update the database buffer. That is not part of the installation. Um, install or on, on the simple installer that you get with on them. So just be aware of these settings and how you might need to modify these as you go through the installation um, for your particular environment or for the customer's environment. Okay. Minimize that. Oops. Not all the way. Just want to get rid of the uh, screen there. Okay. Back to our installation. So we're, we're just going on the basic uh, default settings right now. And I'm just going to press next. And there's going to be an end user license agreement. Uh, you can just accept that. Recommend reading it um, at your leisure. Next. And the first screen here, we have the um, option to take the directory name. That's the default for where OMNM gets installed. Or you can choose a, choose a folder. It's up to you. Um, we're going to accept the defaults. But next. And here's the screen where we're setting the defaults for the application server and the Synergy web server. Again, the application server is how hard the application is going to work and how much RAM it needs to do that work based on our resizing recommendations. And then the Synergy web server is, uh, relates to the number of concurrent users or things going on the front end, the web, the web front end. And uh, that may be, need to be modified accordingly. I'm going to accept the defaults here. And the next screen is asking for the data path. And this is for the database. And you see here, this is my SQL that we lay down by default. And uh, we do recommend just sticking with the defaults, but you could put the database on another, on, the, on another drive on the same system. We don't recommend putting it on a share where it points to another system somewhere that's, uh, that's handled differently in terms of distributing the database. And so you don't want to do that. So anywhere on the local box is fine. But we do recommend sticking with the defaults. There's an initial size to the database. Typically, it's about a gig of space it's going to start with. And then you could put a max on how big it can grow. This is 10 gigs roughly. Uh, you can modify this up or down, down as you see fit. You can always uh, also modify later um, the size of the database. So this isn't written in stone. Um, you recommend just accepting the defaults for the initial installation. Okay. Once you click next here, it's going to go out and do a port scan. And we're going we're to scan for common ports that we need that we don't want to be blocked prior to our installation. A common one that gets blocked is SNMP, and uh, people frequently have SNMP or SNMP tools um, on their system. And uh, if that's up and running during the install or during the time that uh, the OMM tries to run, um, it will conflict and the app application server won't start. You'll see that information in the app server log when it starts, but at least on the initial install, we try to see if there's any open ports at the time we're installing. Again, that could change later, but uh, we want to make sure they're not bound during the install and for the initial startup. Uh, this is just a, a review of what you're doing here, installing and your, your install path. The partition name is not important. It's just a name for the application server. Um, auto start is true. This is the default, meaning that the application server will start up automatically and the web server as well. This is our default sizes for our um, app server and deep size. Our IP address um, is just of our local IP that we grab and the port we're using, the database uh, IP, and the disk space that's uh, required and available. So you can review that. If you're happy with that, just click Install. And this part should take, I don't know, roughly five, maybe ten minutes uh, to get through it. So I'm going to pause the recording just for a minute while this completes, and then I'll restart it. Okay, during that section, it was essentially extracting all the files to the install directory, laying down all the files, and then installing the database 
and uh, now it's configuring the database and, it, and once that's configured it needs to seed data into the database. Okay, so our, now our um, installation is complete, the database is seeded, and um, you get the congratulations, you're done here. So we're done. You said done. And uh, what we see at the bottom here is our um, icons for our application server. It is in the process of starting, and this is our web server, and that's already started. So uh, once that says initializing, once it turns green, you are ready to go and the application is ready to use. And so it's as simple as that. And so that concludes uh, this uh, presentation on uh, basic installation. I want to thank everyone for joining us. And uh, well, I guess we'll see you next time on the next section of uh, Dell OMNM Tech Talk.